Hi everyone, I'm Dave from the Polypad team and I am going to share with you our Polypad updates for January 2024. Here I am in the help tab on Polypad and you can see all of these updates for January that I'll give you a quick overview of in this video. So let me start with the sonification for dice and spinners. So I'll go back to the tile tab. I'm in the probability and data section. And let me add a few dice to the canvas just using the C button to copy them. Let me roll them all so we get a few different options. I'll roll the middle one again. Of course, I keep getting a one here. I'd like to get a different number. There we are. Okay, so now let me zoom in a bit. When I select the dice, there's a new play button. So I'll play the one. And you can maybe hear that the pitch of those was different. So there is a mode where each number represents a different pitch. I'm going to select them all and go to the More Tools menu. And in the Music section, there's a drop down called Randomization. You can see it's on pitch right now. I'm going to change it to Beats. So I changed it to Beats, and now it plays the number of pips. Lovely. Uh, the next option is Subdivisions. So let me choose subdivisions and let you listen to that one. So this is taking the same amount of time and breaking it up into those number of subdivisions based on the pips on the dice. So this is, is, the, uh, is the whole, this is the one. And this will take the same amount of time in five beats. And then the final option to play these dice is uh, duration. So let me put it on duration and play this for you. Oh, I rolled it. That's all right, I'll play this. So that's a duration of six, and this is a duration of four, but showing you the four as it goes. And what's really fun about these, I could grab out a song tile. Let me put a song tile out here, zoom out a bit. And uh, I'm going to set the song tile so there's no musical scale. Let me just do, oh, not percussion. I want none. And I can make a single track of the song tile. And let me put in a bunch of dice here. So there's three, there's six, there's nine. Uh, and I'm going to set all of these dice to pitch. And then I'm going to roll them all. And I'm basically making like a random song. So now I can play the song tile. Not bad for a random song, kind of fun. So students uh, might have fun exploring all the random songs they can make with the dice. Awesome. Uh, all right, the next thing we added sonification to spinners. So I'll go back to the probability data section. Here's a spinner. And uh, let me spin it. And it's going to play the section that, that I landed on. And you can see here, this is also un, under randomization. This is now a different pitch for each of the segments of the spinner. I could change it to beats, where it'll stop based on the one that the spinner has landed on. So uh, let's see if that's on the blue or the purple. It's right on the purple, so that played three. So that's the beats option. Subdivisions, again, will take the total amount of time and split it up into the number of sections of the spinner. And then the final one on the spinner is duration, which is the same as it was on the dice. Awesome, so it's a single beat that, or a single note of music takes that amount of time. So uh, explore the spinners as well. Okay, uh, next in authoring mode, we have an option to make a text box non-editable. So let me add a text box on the screen and we'll just say, what's new video? I'm adding some text. Here it is on the screen. Um, and if I shared this with students, they could fully edit the text. They could go in here and they could add their own text. But there are times I want students to move a text box around, around the screen, but not make any changes to it. So I can go into authoring mode. 
And what's new here in authoring is this toggle called editable. And so that's going to, if I turn this off, that's going to allow a student to move the text box around the canvas, but not change the text. Previously, there was this locked option under interactivity. And if I go out of authoring mode, this is fully locked. A student couldn't even move that around the canvas. But now if I go back into authoring mode, set this back to normal, but turn off this toggle and go out of authoring mode, what, what you'll notice is all I can do is move that around the canvas. I could turn all of these off as well. Let me just show you that. So this text box, I can make it uh, so you can't rotate it. And then under action visibility, I'm going to unselect all of these. So I don't want students to do anything to the text box. Now I'll leave authoring mode. And you can see I just have this text box to move around Canvas. So that can be helpful for, for a variety of activities as well. All right, let's keep going here. Uh, I'm going to go back to the What's New section and scroll down to January. New button to graph equations. All right, let me get an equation to graph. I'm going to our equation editor down here at the bottom of the Canvas. And let me just type y equals 3x plus 2. And now when, when I click on that equation, there's a graph button in the action bar. It used to be a little blue triangle that you would connect to a coordinate system. But now you have an equation. I click this graph button. Let me zoom out a bit. And there's the graph. Let me get my not editable text box out of the way. Awesome. So I could change the color of this if I wanted to. Uh, this a little bit. And so now what, what you, you can see when it's when I click on the graph or the equation, I get this blue arrow. So if I don't want to connect the equation to the graph anymore, I can remove the blue arrow and just let go. And then if I want to graph it again, I go back to the equation and I click the graph button. Great. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, what is next here? Split and merge number frames. Really excited about this one. So let me go to the number section. And here are our number frames. Let me just put a bunch on the canvas. There we go. So those are the number frames. Zoom in a bit here. And now when I select all of them, one new option is merge. So I'm going to merge them into one big number frame. Whoop. Ah, lovely. And then split option will split this into individual uh, pieces of the number frame. So if I click split, uh, I could take this one and move it down here. And then I could merge these back together and merge these together as well. There we go. There's also an organize option. So if I had a few like this and I select them all, I can do organize, which will put them in a single row, not merged yet. And then if I wanted to, I could merge them together. Lovely. So lots of nice ways to explore like decomposition of numbers to put them together again, taking this one, adding it on to a different number. Great. All right. So that is number frames. We have an ability to change the major grid lines on a 10 frame. Let me show you this. So here is our 10 frame. And you can see it starts as a 10 frame. When I click and drag on these handles, I get uh, I, I can change the size of the frame. And you can see by default, the, the thicker black lines, the major grid lines, are at five and two. And so if I go into authoring mode here and I click on more tools, you can see major grid lines two and five. So let's say I want to make this four and seven for some reason, right? So there the major grid lines are at four and seven. And you can see every fourth one, I'll get a major grid line going this way and seven going that way. Um, but let's say I just wanted to have none of, of the darker lines and I wanted this to be six by four or something. You can see there are none. Uh, I also could change this to six just so I know it's exactly matched up. So there is a six by four 10 frame, well, 24 frame, I guess. Uh, and then when I go out of authoring mode, students don't have the ability to make changes to that. Great. 
we have an input bar for input field for number bars. So if I go to the number bar section, prior to this, if you wanted to make a number bar of 20, you could do something like this. You could take 7, 10, and 3, and you could select them all and merge them together to get a 20. So that's not new, but what's new is this input field here. So I can type in 20 and just get a 20 number bar. Uh, let's do 18. There you go, 18, and so on. So that input field is new. So then uh, some, some features in authoring mode to highlight. One is setting an initial viewport. So let's say this is a polypad that I've made for students. It's kind of just what I've been showing here. But let's say when I want them to open the polypad, I just want it to be focused on this, not uh, the entire polypad, right? So what I'm going to do, uh, so we have, we've added this option to set an initial viewport. So if you go into authoring mode, you can see there's this new toggle called set initial viewport. And when I turn this on, I get this uh, initial viewport tile on the canvas that I can change the size of. So now, when I have this as my initial viewport, and you can see it's showing me the number of pixels of that. So if I wanted to make sure it was a certain size or a certain aspect ratio, I could do that. And now, I don't want to turn this off because if I turn this off, it's going to remove the initial viewport and it's, it's not there anymore. I need to turn it back on uh, and start over here. So there's the initial viewport. But when I go out of authoring mode, that tile is going to disappear. It's, it's still there, but you only see it inside of authoring mode. So I go out of authoring mode and then it's no longer there. But if I were to save this polypad and reload it, this would be what you would first see when that polypad is reloaded. So uh, some good options for authors and teachers if you're making an activity and you, want, you, you really want to control what students first see when they open the polypad. Uh, and finally, we added a, um, a reset button, which is, is mainly needed uh, inside of Activity Builder. There is a section in our tutorial menu on Activity Builder here that you can go explore, uh, but there's a reset button. I'll just I'll show it to you inside of authoring mode. You can see there's a new toggle called uh, Disable Reset. When I turn this off, you can see there's a reset button in the settings bar on the right. And when students click that, uh, I'm going to hit cancel, it would reload the saved canvas. So either the the canvas that was shared with them by the teacher, or if they had saved it and they hit the reset button. It's just like um, the refresh button on a browser. And then finally, we added a trash can when deleting a polypad from your library. So if you have a polypad and you've saved it in your library, here's the library tab. These are all my saved polypads. Uh, if you open one and you delete it, there's a new folder uh, with your deleted polypads to and then you can go into the deleted folder and recover a deleted polypad or delete all of the ones that are in the in the deleted folder so a number of uh small improvements to individual tiles and some authoring mode features in january we hope you find these useful please ask any questions in the comments of this video across our social media channels and please share how you use these new features with students. We always love to see how teachers are using Polypad. Thanks for watching.